Hello everyone. Today we'll be presenting to you Guardian Go. A guardian, wherever they go. So zero is obviously the only acceptable number of the amount of children that go missing. But sadly, in the United States alone, hundreds of thousands of children go missing every single year. Cell phones and similar devices have been very helpful tools in protecting children, but they often lack critical features that would be helpful. For example, they're not always on the person. And when they are, they can take a good amount of time to pull out, let alone send a message, make a phone call, or start recording. Also, they are non discreet which means they can be targeted very easily. And if they're removed from the person before they can send help, that is obviously very unhelpful. And current solutions um, that try to mitigate these problems are often very expensive, or they don't, aren't designed with these diverse range of situations in mind. So that's why we would like to introduce Guardian Go. This is a smart, wearable device that simplifies child safety. Its primary purpose is to allow parents to monitor their children and communicate with them when they're in dangerous situations. It's, all of its features are designed with safety response at their center. And because you want every child to have one, they're meant to be family portable. So let's start off with market validation. Are we sure this even has liability in the market? And we believe so. We're going to look at four main products. The first being one we are probably all familiar with, Life Alert. In 2020 alone, they saved 45,000 45, people. Next is Invisalign, a product similar to ours marketed toward women. They currently have over 100,000 customers. Next is AngelSense, a competitor of ours. They have, according to Amazon, approximately 250 new users per month. And last one on this list is Amber Alert GPS, who currently have 100 plus downloads on the Google Play Store. And we do recognize that is a tad low. We've heard that they recently went some, underwent some rebranding as of recently. But regardless, through these numbers, we believe that Guardian Go absolutely has viability within the market. operate in the niche market of child safety devices. However, child safety is a fundamental concern of guardians worldwide. It's a catalyst in driving the growth of the markets that we straddle and it propels the demand for the need for, of solutions like Guardian Go. Our total adjustable market is within lo location sharing. It's valued at around 71.71 71 billion in 2023 with a CAGR of 26% until 2027. We understand that Guardian Go is a niche market, and so therefore we have to use a bottoms up approach when calculating the value of our serviceable, adjustable market. So we estimated it by using the market value for wearable security devices and the number of families with children ages three through 11 in the US. And that value is around 32 billion in 20, 2023, and it's projected to grow at 6% rate of KGAR. And for the serviceable, obtainable market, we project that it will have a target of 0.1% of our SAM, which is going to be $32 million in 2023. Guardian Go is easy to use. Uh, you start by configuring the app. You can select um, or deselect certain features based on the age of your child, your child's needs, um, the amount of time you spend away from your child. Then you can attach the, well, first you'll need to configure Wi-Fi and data settings. Then you will be able to attach the uh, Guardian Go to your child, allowing you to have peace of mind and relax throughout your day while you're away from your child. Next up, our business model. We're going to start with a $99.99 initial charge. This will allow the parents to have access to the hardware as well as an initial trial to our services offer. After that initial trial, we'll move to a $5.99 per month subscription 
if the parents wish to continue using our product. Projected, uh, this will give us a projected profit of $32 million by 2027. And we gained this number through 0.1% um, of our service table mark, service of our service accessible market, and approximating about 300,000 users after two years post MVP, and we are anticipating an MVP after about two years in 2025. A conservative estimate that we wanted to make for the purpose of this presentation. Um, so our go to market strategy, first we need to be in partnering with uh, cell phone companies. The two we want to target are Charity Mobile and Verizon Wireless. This is because Charity Mobile markets themselves as a pro-family organization and they work very closely with Verizon Wireless to gain access to cell phone towers. Now besides regular advertising on the internet, social media, um, we have two main strategies. The first is to target schools and their districts. This is mostly so that we can advertise to the parents in their districts while also providing us a location for exhibitions and other events. Next are large conferences. Um, since we pride ourselves on the tech that's in Guardian Go, we want to attend events like CES and South by Southwest, which are both tech shows, but also some more specific ones like Innovative School Summit and the National Federation of Families Conferences, which are more focused on children and Right, our close competitors complicate child safety. So from the left, we have TikTok, which is more like a smartwatch, and it's priced like one. It has a touchscreen to design, which wastes precious, precious seconds in a child's safety when they're navigating through it. The other one, like as Ethel mentioned, is AngelSense. It's not discreet at all. It's a very bulky design, and there's a giant SOS button on it. Then the other one is GeoBit, which is also by Life360. It's, it has no communication devices located in it, just the tracking devices. Um, and it's a clip-on design, so a child can easily lose it. Then we also have Amber Alert GPS, which has no wearable design at all. It's more like a, key, a keychain of sorts, and it could be hard for the child to access it again. While our competitors offer decent devices, we're coming to the market with um, major advantages. Specifically, ours is much more affordable than our competitors. Um, although we do charge $100 out of the box, um, the subscription fee is only $6 a month. The device is standalone, meaning it does not need a um, cell phone to communicate between the app and the device. And we're using cutting edge technology, um, such as the uh, device is not easily removable, and we have AI powered voice detection. So my name is Ron Katan. I'm Parker Candland. Um, I'm studying digital circuit design at the University of Utah. I'm Dana Sindor. I'm doing AI biases at the University of Utah. I'm Thomas Green. I'm currently studying data science here at the University of Utah. So we are a team of hardworking computer engineers, and we should all be graduating sometime within the next year or so. Uh, lastly is our financials. We are asking for $200,000 for 20% equity. We intend to use this for a variety of things, including the development of AI and hardware, the research into satellite and cell tower usage, partnering with cell providers to use cell towers, as well as patenting and marketing. Thank you all for your time. We hope that you will help us get every child guardian on the go with Guardian. Is this like a rechargeable device, or is this like a like a disposable battery? No, it's, it's just going to be rechargeable. How long is the battery life on it? If it's in like full GPS mode? Well, we obviously, or not obviously, we don't have an MVP yet, um, but we hope that it would be at least a couple of days. 
and there's a couple strategies to do this. Depending on how you connect, um, say like Google Flow Energy if you buy a phone, or Wi-Fi if you're in a house, and then someone's power on you is instead of GPS if you're in a garage. Um, so hopefully using those strategies can get it to this. I had another question too, that's all right. So if like I had a kid and I gave this kid the advice and they hit the SLS button, does that go to like a call center that then assemble like contacts the first responders or does it go straight to you and then you would have to go, you know, get in contact with the first responders? Mm -hmm. How would that? Yeah, so I think we be able to set that up an app, obviously for very young children who may not have to, you know, give them uh, a way to call kind of one very easily. Um, but we expect most people to just set it up uh, so that it contacts the guardians or anybody else in their circle, like siblings, grandparents, family friends, um, and then they can be the ones to make the dispatch. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with this advice, it's the initial cost is $9.99, and then the monthly fee is $6 a month. If you buy this device and you do not want to use the monthly subscription, do you now just have a piece of technology that is essentially useless? Yeah, so uh, again, we need to refine the business model more since we don't have a lot of the product. But uh, a lot of companies and the company on this line offer like, very base features. So maybe you do something like you only offer uh, so a single go to like say two members of the family instead of uh, you know a couple of people or everyone else in the circle. Um, so ideally, since you know they didn't have a device, we could have some sort of functionality, but that's not really the functionality. It would be similar to your cell phone too. You can use your cell phone without data, you can still connect to the internet, um, and it will be able to connect to Wi-Fi if you don't have data. Okay, so if you don't have a subscription, you can still you'll still be able to operate it like on Wi-Fi or something. So kids are remarkably rambunctious and they take their body parts into all sorts of things. What prevents or what measures do you have in place to prevent accidental signaling? Like they hit the button on accident. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I don't know if this was addressed a second ago, but it won't, it's not gonna go directly to an emergency service provider. So it would go to the parent. Parent, it's then up to the parent to decide how to respond. And so, you know, if you're the parent and you decide that um, your kid is being annoying and he him and his friends just keep pressing the alert button, then it's up to you to silence it. And um, you're welcome to do that. And along those lines, it would also be ideal to make it so that player generated on one can make it uh, into an SOS signal up, um, so that can be done using the like, biometrics of fingerprint or some sort of ways like that. And this is something that you may have mentioned, but how are you keeping the device discreet? Because this is kind of a watch wristband that they have, like, you know, everybody sees it really like, all the time. So, what are they making it discreet? So instead of having a bulky design and having that very obvious as well as we'll probably have it more uniform in color and uh, smaller so that way it looks more like a, a bracelet of sorts. Um, and having the buttons be more accessible for the child to reach without making it look like they're pressing a button for an SOS. Yeah, I think maybe it wouldn't look like an electronic device at all. So no screens, the buttons are yeah, it's actually a very good product. And I, s I can see the ad should be bought among other competitors. So have you considered any international expansions? Like, is this product, this product can work with different GPS networks uh, outside USA and even the language? Because I think it sends an SOS message, right? So. Just an idea, have you considered any international expansions or just this most work in the US? Right now we're considering the US only. Um, there are different cultural differences that Japan, they have a different safety system for the children than what we could like, possibly provide. Mm -hmm. But other countries that we think might be viable and work similarly, we could expand. Okay. 
Thank you. I really like the presentation a lot. It was like, like really nice. Um, there's two things that caught me. Uh, and one was how much data can you actually buy for 599 months if you're also still trying to make a profit of it? And if you're constantly uh, you know, transmitting data and receiving data. And then the second thing is like the small design. So you're working in actually circuit design, right? So like my understanding was always like with the uh, M6 children, we uh, have worked into those things. Uh, people know how many we actually like a lot and so on. I'm super curious. But like, I think most of them are like six. It's a GPS receiver. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can build it all that easy, all that easy. And then, of course, there's the battery problem, right? Like, uh, how are you going to power it if it's small, like, you know, it's an LCD watch? But, like, can you actually run the functionality on that smaller space? And I wonder if, like, do the competitors maybe look that big because it's just hard to make it any smaller. Yes, so to answer your first question, remind me of your first question, what exactly it was? The 599, the 599, um, and then the second is, can you ask, is, it, is that actually saying, can it actually be made smaller? I'll be there if I'm to ask it. So, to. Um, so as far as the first question goes, it'll be a function of how many, uh, how many customers you have already subscribing. So you might not be profitable at first, but as we get more customers, we'll be able to, 599 can, we can stretch that a little bit further. And then the second question, um, I actually, have, a lot of our design has kind of been slightly centered around the design of the Fitbit, especially the first older Fitbit. Um, and they were successful in cramming a lot of stuff on a small chip. And I have one of those Fitbits, and so I'd like to kind of break it apart and start looking at uh, their GPS. And, um, also, their uh, like heart rate monitor. Uh, one more question. Yeah. So you guys talked about how you're gonna uh, make a partner with, partner with Verizon and like have it be like a just like. Do you need service, right, to use this first gun? What What are your plans to like? If you don't have like cell tower like near you or like something happens. Like, how do you get that SOS message to the tank? Yeah. So uh, something we didn't really mention was in the last slide for our research and development. Um, we've been looking for again trying to look. Yeah. Uh, like GPS technology, so you don't necessarily have to be there in a cell tower. Uh, again, like, as you were saying, that would be very hard to fit in there. Um, but GPS would be able to be the next viable option. But that's just like positioning, it doesn't like send it to someone, you know what I mean? Like GPS is just like where you are on the so, surface. Satellite communication. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Right. Thank you everyone for your questions.